I'm Safi. And I'm Mystic. And this is Lore Together. This is the podcast where a husband and wife team talk about video game stories, characters, world building, and other such things, because it's one of the things we like to do together. We lore together. Yes, and this is episode 14, taking a look at another Bioware game. We just did Dragon Age not too long ago. We're going to be taking a look at Jade Empire today. Yeah, which is another fighting game because we just did Mortal Kombat, right? It's it's not as, as polished a fighting game in terms of fighting. Okay. Well, I mean, Mortal Kombat's one, had... One review I read called the fighting serviceable. Serviceable fighting. That just sounds like... That sounds like when you do capoeira for fitness. That's what it sounds like. I think it's more... It is much more of an RPG than it is a fighting game. game. Okay. But it, people love it, so there's there's definitely something to it, so we'll be diving into that today. Mm-hmm. But first, if you want to hear more from us, which we hope you do, you can follow us on Twitter at Lore Together. You can email us directly, loretogether at gmail.com. Occasionally, Mystic can be found roaming around Reddit at the handle Lore Together Pod. And then finally, if you really like us and you want to celebrate lore with us, go to patreon.com slash lore together, where we just recently updated our tiers with so many more extra goodies and including live streams where you get to see me wince as I try to do fighting games and not feel bad for the people I'm hitting. Yeah. And we're actually going to be recording our first mini episode. Yeah. So we're going to have mini episodes. We'll probably have more of those coming up as time goes on. Spoiler alert, we're having a baby. Right. So there's probably going to be some... Things will be interesting. You'll probably hear crying in the background at some point. Yeah. I mean, you're just going to have to forgive the fact that the newborn is going to want to eat. But I think we're definitely going to have more time for mini-sodes for a bit. And we're going to have a good backlog for anybody who wants to support us. (laughs) Anyway, Jade Empire. This is a Bioware title. Bioware, one of our faves, of course. This released for the Xbox originally in April 2005. Only the Xbox. It was an Xbox exclusive at first. Okay. And so, and this is the original Xbox. This is one before we realized Microsoft could make a gaming machine that would be taken seriously. I, f- I think a lot of gamers forget that Xbox was not a proven concept and there was a lot of skepticism around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be- because my family, we very, str- and it's, this is just more my brother and I, but we strictly were a PlayStation and Nintendo family until, I don't even know if we got a 360. I think we got a 360, and that's Uh, why... The 360 with the red rings of death. I made good money in tech support off of those things. Yeah. So, Jade Emperor has been ported to the PC Mm. since then. Yes, of course. And that is kind of the definitive version now. Mm. Uh, This predates Mass Effect and Dragon Age, the huge universes Bioware is now known for. Right. Because at that time, they were... They did this, which was an IP, and they were also still working on Star Wars, correct? We'll get into their history a little bit. Actually, I can get into it right now. The game began development in May 2001, so a four-year development cycle. Okay. uh, Was the company's first original RPG intellectual property. Okay. Before that, they had done Baldur's Gate. Right. As their only actual RPG universe up until that point. Oh, okay. They had done a mech game called Shattered Steel and Mm -hmm. MDK2, which was a third-person kind of action-y adventure thing. Okay, I haven't heard of either one of those whatsoever. I remember playing the MDK2 demo all the time on the Dreamcast, but that's about it. MDK2 sounds like one of those bro-y titles. MDK2! It's murder, death, kill. I think. Yes, that that does sound like something that you would smash a soda can on your forehead while you're in the middle of playing it when you're 13 years it's old not, to prove how it's, edgy you are. It's not really that edgy, though. So if I remember correctly, we're going to do a minor, just a one little thing here. I remember that there are three playable characters in it. Okay. There's a scientist. Okay. There's a guy with a sniper helmet. Like his helmet has like a sniper scope built into it. It's like this really long, weird helmet. And then there's a four-armed dog with four guns. No, that just sounds as ed- as as like pseudo edgy as I thought it was gonna be. That's I I'm I'm tired. But it's of not it. I'm just it it's already. not just like run and gun and you know smash cans against your head. There is it, it's a little weirder than that. It's not it, th- there's more to it than that. Okay, I'll I'll give it that, but it doesn't sound like that. So 
whatever. I'm making fun of its name. That's that's all I'm doing. That's fine. <laughs> um, so they were working on Baldur's Gate as their only RPG. They started work on this, and before between the time that this started development and this came out, mm-hmm. they also came out with Neverwinter and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Okay. So those two came out while they were still working on this. Now, was Neverwinter Knights uh, MMO? No, I don't believe so anyway. I don't remember okay. off the top of my head. I don't think so. There is a Neverwinter MMO. I okay. don't think Neverwinter Nights was an MMO. Okay. Because this... So you mentioned that Jade Emperor came out in 2005, right? Mm-hmm. I will... So this was when I was f- finishing high school. So probably around high school for me was when EverQuest was the... Okay. This was before WoW took over EverQuest. I think... I, I haven't looked into Neverwinter. I played the MMO... And I feel, for, yeah, I feel like I had friends who tried out Neverwinter and liked yeah. it. And I had not, I just wasn't into gaming enough to even. I want to say Neverwinter might, might be multiplayer, but I don't think it was required. Yeah. I think there was a single player component. I'm not 100%. I haven't looked into it. Yeah, this was this was around the time where the only gaming I was really doing was The Sims. Sims 2 in particular. My game cra- my computer crashed several times and I lost so many save files. And it was so sad. Really? It wasn't as bad as the time when my computer really crashed and I lost chapters of a book I was writing in in, in high school. Mm. And that was one of the few times where my dad told me to calm down and I did the exact opposite. And he then proceeded to realize you can't tell a teenage girl to calm down sometimes. You just got to let her scream. <laughs> it's just... It was just one of those times. The concept of Jade Empire had existed with company co-founders Ray Musica and Greg Zezkuk since they started at Bioware and was part of this plan, along with, you know, Baldur's Gate, they wanted to work on RPGs, basically. Okay. And this was also called their dream project. They aimed to fulfill these player fantasies and become this powerful martial arts master type thing. Right. And the game is set in the Jade Empire, a fictional Far Eastern kingdom based on elements of ancient Chinese history and Chinese mythology. Okay. In the game, humans live side by side in the mortal realm with mystical creatures and monsters, the world and lore takes influences from Taoism. Okay. But it's not 100%. For example, within Taoism, there's five elements. Right. There's water, wood, fire, earth, and metal. Mm-hmm. Within Jade Empire's magic that, you know, you can wield and manipulate, there's only fire, water, stone, earth, yeah. you know, whatever, and wind. So it's like there's parallels, but it's not the same mythology. It's definitely based off of okay, off of Chinese mythology, but it's not 100. percent And specifically Taoism in Chinese mythology, because that's what I got from it. So not a lot of Confucianism, not stuff like the same kind of lore that influenced, you know, like Dragon Ball was originally kind of a. Dragon Ball was Journey to the West, I believe. Yeah, the Journey to, into the yeah. West, which also is Sayuki, which is literally more of a little transition to Journey into the West. I but I digress. I think it is Taoism because there's we'll get there, but there's like yeah. a a morality duality thing going on. Right. So part of the problem with researching this game actually was there seems to be some discrepancies. So, so your information is not consistent. It's not consistent. The wikipedia entry for jade empire which i was going for my basic you know here's development history yeah referenced that there were sorcerers in the game that could use all five elementals and they would link to the taoism elements and then when i looked into the actual game it's no you have these four elements those five elements thing was taken from an interview that was done a year before the game came out oh my gosh so that's why i had to follow links see and children, yeah. this is why you don't base your reports off of Wikipedia. Right. You need a primary source here or there. And the primary source is... I, I've played Jedi Empire. Okay. I haven't beaten it yet. It's a long game. I do plan on playing it through after researching all of this. Okay. And I've watched a full Let's Play of it. Mm-hmm. The fan wiki... I yeah. usually go to fan wikis a lot because they tend to be better than Wikipedia. The fan wiki itself is literally missing chapters of the main story. Oh my, wow, okay, wow. That there are is... seven chapters in the story. I think it's seven or eight. I, I have it listed later down, but I don't remember off the top of my head right now. But two of those chapters are just not even 
They don't have like a, a stub article for them. But you know what? And I I have to relate because when I did my One Dragon Age episode, I pretty much had to speed read one of the books that I had because I knew it was missing specific information right. that I had to... So, and the outlines of the story weren't even in chronological order. So it's just one of those things... Oh, that's confusing. Yeah, <laughs> y- yeah, especially with mine, because, you know, we were trying to tell... A chronological story. A chronological yeah. story spread across, essentially, like, four or five different storytelling mm-hmm. settings. Anyway, so I can relate to that trauma. Right. Fan wikis seem to be more of an art than a science. That's just how it is. Well... Fan wikis are, by definition, people who are enthralled in the lore mm-hmm. and in the universe. Wikipedia is just generic stuff. I actually had to go to the... I didn't know Bioware itself has a fan like has a fan wiki dedicated just to Bioware, and there's pages on these old titles that they did. Oh, that's good to so know. So I found that to kind of fill in some gaps, and then I was watching the Let's Play to fill in more gaps and stuff. Nice. Okay. Okay. But, yeah, there's... Also, Jade Empire is just very complex. There's a lot of names. There's okay. a lot of characters. There's okay. a lot of interrelationships. So it gets a little. This sounds like a a days a of your. Title. No, it sounds like a day of days of our lives analysis, but people are going to kick each other in the face. It actually reminds me a lot of martial the sword martial arts movies. Uh, okay, hero. Um, oh. House of Flying Daggers. Yes, you know those. You know those are the famous ones in the West. There's, it's obviously a whole genre. Crouching tra- Tiger, Crouching Hidden, Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I haven't seen that one yet. One. Actually, I have not either. Hero was. I liked Hero. Hero was good, but you had to realize Hero was a little different. Hero was a little bit more artsy than most of them. Yeah, you had to realize it was an art film. It was an but art film. It reminds me a lot of that where. It's traditional Chinese storytelling, but there's licenses taken. Let's get back to Jade Empire now. Yes. So there's two languages spoken in the Jade Empire. There's English. Okay. Which I assume that when they say that, they mean it's supposed to be English, but I don't know. It may just be that English is the way it's presented. It could be... Yeah, instead of Mandarin, they're doing English. Yeah. And there's Thofan, which is a once common language... And its speakers have become scarcer in the empire. This language isn't the best handled, in my opinion. Is it um, a f- is it a fictional language? It is a fictional language. Okay. It was created by a linguist up in Canada at Bio- near Bioware Studios. He is a PhD in linguist. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, and I didn't put it in my notes because that was smart of me. But in the game, the Thofan fra- phrases they're presented in English subtitles. Okay. And. The translations don't match up with anything that's being said because most of them are just pulled from a set of pre-recorded phrases. They're not like reading in the language. Oh, okay. Side note. So Dragon Age, another Bioware property, has an elvish tongue. And there are people who speak elven, but they did not get a linguist. Basically, and they confirmed at one point or another because there was a fan fan translator who was trying to like you know make up stuff and it turns out what it really what it really is is they don't have a a linguist who made a language they have more of like a cipher like here is a guy if you want to make a phrase and it's not a phrase we've referenced before here's a bit of a guide on how to do it and then we'll just kind of fudge it that's that's what they've done with the elven language as well which it works. It works, especially because it's forgotten in that one. You don't have as many fluent speakers as you would, it sounds like, of this, what is it, Thofan, you called it? I think so, yeah. Um, so so it sounds like there's people who are supposed to be speaking Thofan, and it's... Yeah. I would it, like, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would like to say I, I am going to mess up a lot of translation, or a lot of pronunciations in this is this Chinese, it's, it's a man, is it Mandarin or is it Cantonese base or is it just? I don't know. Okay. I don't remember. So for, for the, the uninitiated. Literally the Wikipedia, the wiki says it's, it's English and this ancient tongue. Yeah. Most things are read by English voice actors. Okay. In fact, Nathan Fillion, this is one of his earliest video game roles. Oh, cool. Um, John Cleese is in here. Nice. There, so there's, and, and there's a bunch of really good voice actors in here. And the voice acting is not bad, but it gets weird so okay and 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 are the names based in based in chinese culture 
Yes and no. It okay. gets it. It seems like they're trying to mash it. It's definitely a westernized take of Chinese culture. Okay. So this is an action RPG, unlike all the previous games in Bioware's history at this point. Right. So, and even then, it's a little different than Dragon Age and Mass Effect because both of those allow you to pause. Here, you're pretty much always moving. Oh wow! So yeah. The player has seven possible player characters to choose from. Okay. Three female, four male. The original game only had six, but a fourth male was added in a special edition and then the PC release. So. Okay. And these characters all dictate some aspects of the story. Characters react differently to the different sexes, but generally the story is the same. There's, okay. There's, you know, people will describe you differently and stuff like that. And it does change your romance options. Of because course. Because, of course, there's romance options. It's Bioware. There's almost always romance options unless EA decides that the timeline says no. Right. And this is like Dragon Age Origins. Your player character is not voiced. Okay. They just kind of sit there dumbly, and then you pick dialogue options. And frankly, I get why some people like that. I don't. I like a voiced protagonist. Here's the thing. If they had better facial reactions, I think they would. And, and This even- game does not. And neither did Origins, and that was kind of annoying, because you do kind of look dumb if you're not reacting to it. Right. This is a very stylized game. It's not very realistic. It's a lot... It's it's stylized, and honestly, in some ways, I would say something like Scars of Arcadia looks better. Oh, interesting. And I think that because Scars of Arcadia kind of leans into that anime aspect where it's less uncanny valley, there are some really poor quality textures in this game. Okay, yeah, because Skies of Arcadia was very was very aware it was cartoonish and they didn't care right this one has a a, one character in particular named kang the mad who is one of your followers just has just this very blurry low resolution texture it just does not look good that just reminds me of when i was trying to play which elder scrolls game was it probably oblivion is yeah i remember trying to create your your character your character's facial expressions and it wouldn't even stay right and version i was like everything just looks like you put a picture of a person's face on a marshmallow and microwaved it for five seconds that was the uh, the play-doh face that yeah. they had yeah that was definitely an oblivion thing so because morrowind had like presets you just pick from a bunch of presets and then skyrim actually had you know moving stuff around and stuff slightly right right and then you never saw your character's face ever again sorry i'm distracting you <laughs> As with many of these Bioware games that we've come to love, there is a morality mirror, meter, though this isn't exactly, quote, morality. It it gets a little nuanced, or at least it feels like it's trying to be nuanced. Okay. One side is the way of the open palm. Okay, yes. The other is the way of the closed fist. Okay, that seems like a more, an obvious comparison of, like, force versus, you know, The way of the diplomacy. open palm is a path of harmony and and guardianship. Mm -hmm. Followers of this philosophy act with compassion and consideration towards the less powerful or the oppressed. Mm -hmm. The way of the closed fist values strength above any other virtue. Whilst acts that are considered, quote, evil give closed fist points in the game, the school of thought prizes independence and ambition over cruelty and greed. Okay, so it's the Ayn Rand of fighting philosophies. Many characters associated with the, quote, low path of closed fist in the game are perceived as tyrannical and evil, but a true follower improves the individual to benefit their surroundings. Right. So now Uh, that's, yeah. Yeah. On the surface, this seems to be very dualistic. I think it kind of is, Mm -hmm. but I think they're trying to do more nuance than that in how they write about it. Well, it's, yeah, it sounds like it's not inherently, you know, selfishness versus selflessness because that's kind of where my Western brain goes. Right. The, Sorry. I was going to just add that instead of that duality, it looks like that instead it's about improvement on the self versus improvement on the outside world. Yes and no. The way of the closed fist could be seen as the way as as the good of the many, just as much as the mm-hmm. way of the open palm. Mm-hmm. To use a common political thought, the open palm could be peace and harmony and the closed fist can be justice and challenging the status quo. Right. Yeah. The characters they have doing the way of the closed fist and following that tend to be the authoritarian, totalitarian, oppressive, you know, they're, they're trying to say that this way is being misused, but it's kind of like Paragon and Renegade, actually. 
It is like Paragon and Renegade. Because Renegade, yeah, because it wasn't necessarily about good and evil. Paragon was more about, again, you're of the people. And Renegade was more like you're of getting the job done no matter right. the means necessary. Even uh, though it kind of evolved to evil Shep versus good Shep. It know? really becomes, is a horrific desecrated desecration style act mm-hmm. that saves thousands of people it what's the balance yeah yeah so that's what i'm saying like both of these things could be the good of the many you know what this reminds me of just random side note you remember when they were gonna try to build another telescope on the that mountain on hawaii and they were gonna have to build it over mm-hmm. sacred burial grounds yeah i remember that yeah i was torn i saw somebody who i, I actually saw a speaker who was like a who taught hula dancing and at the end of it they were like we're selling these scarves you know to support not having more science research because it's over people's graves and i was like i can't i, can't, I get where you're coming from but i don't feel good giving you money either because i'm just really confused as to where i feel that should be be blanket statement can i just say yeah these two-dimensional morality lines that a lot of games use yeah are not sufficient i absolutely agree because (sighs) the real world is complex and messy yeah it's we're getting to the point where now games are realizing they can't you can't you do black or white even though that was it that was actually a a video game series but you can't just do black or white to do eventually yeah you can't just do black or white They're figuring out Shades of Grey right now. I think in narrative storytelling, they're trying to... They've only got a few Shades of Grey. We don't have a really full spectrum just yet. But it's growing. And and part of it's the tech too, right? Like Mm -hmm. the tech and like development hell and all of that kind of stuff. Well, also just writers being taken more seriously because yeah that's as we true discussed too. numerous times gaming is still kind of in the first couple decades of serious storytelling yeah by the time like our kid least, grows up or at least serious storytelling not being the outlier by the time our kid grows up hopefully there'll be like novel ish kind of mm-hmm. not you know the way that you write a novel or do a movie video games will be taken just as seriously mm-hmm. yeah like most bio games there is a selection of followers right this has been a thing ever since Baldur's Gate. Yes. You know, so, and you'll encounter them in the story, and there's the ability to romance a couple of them. Now, all these followers stay the whole story, mm-hmm. so just keep that in mind. It's not like you're gathering a team to go for the big final fight. It's just like this section, you can have this person join, and then they do the, then they do their own thing later on? Roughly. Some are there for the whole time once you meet them. Some will follow you. Some will leave. Kind of like Dragon Age, people would come and go. You can romance a couple of these followers, and there is even same-sex options available. Yay! Don't cheer too much. Uh oh. We're also we're early days here. We are relegated to a scene with a kiss. Yes, this is two thousand and five. Five. It was a big deal when Mass Effect came out a few years later, and you got semi nudity in right. one scene. Right. If you knew to choose it. And even if you have the same sex mm-hmm. option, the camera pans away before they kiss. There is a mod <sighs> to fix this in the PC version. Yeah, I that <laughs> d- disappointing. It doesn't matter. It's just a kiss. I mean, right? But I think it's just kind of stuck. Like it, it's kind of yeah. one of those weird things of you're damned if you, damned if you don't. At some point, yeah, it's that gray area of time where you have to make that stupid compromise of fine, we can have a same sex romance, but we can't show them kissing. I will. I appreciate that Bioware has always been trying to do that, and and has even put it in. They've done their best to try and do that, but it's just, it's just, it's hard from a 2020 lens to look back at 2005 and realize that was an issue. So let's run through some of these, some of these followers here and you're not going to get all the context for it, but we're going to run through them. Mm -hmm. So we have the first one that we kind of run across is Dawnstar. Dawnstar feels... I'm just letting Safi react to names at this point too. It's, it feels kind of cheap <laughs> she is a fellow student at the two rivers school under master lee where the player uh mm-hmm. starts off she is an orphan with the ability to sense spirits and the dead dawn star senses spirits of the dead feels 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 a little cheap i'm sorry it just does next character we have zagacious zoo Zag- are you sure that's not a drag queen <laughs> 
Uh, Zagacious Zoo is a former member of the Lotus Assassins who disagreed with the unnecessary slaughter ordered by Death's Hand, which is another character we'll get to. There's a character called Death's Hand. Yes. I'm... Okay, just keep going, okay? Just go. You're going to have problems with this. When What was that game that we covered? Oh, yeah, Mortal Kombat. We were like, Outworld? What the heck is with these names? I'm so, I'm or, s- I, I like thought in names. I'm not necessarily at the level of Tolkien where I make up a language and reference other older languages when I name my characters. But uh, I don't know. This fits very well, I feel, with the Chinese martial arts flick naming conventions that we have, though. Okay. You know, if you go back to Hero, you have character. I can't remember their names though, but their names were all like this. Back. It was been it's been a while, so maybe we should we watch it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sagacious Zoo is attempting to avoid the Lotus Assassins, so he's you know he tries to stay away out of trouble, stay on his own, but he is drawn into the player's ordeal, providing valuable insight into the assassins. He hides much of his past. Okay. And as one person puts it, he is an honorable man. Maybe not a good one, but an honorable one. He's lawful neutral. Yeah. Again, bring some of that nuance and morality into it. Yeah. You know. Right. Uh, next character is Black Whirlwind. A dual axe wielding mercenary known for a short temper, affinity for wine, and his eagerness to kill. He is simple minded. He lives to fight and often ends up killing the people who hire him, which is worrying. Yeah, that is worrying. Also, <laughs> is is he a friend of the Lone Ranger and the Green Hornet? Like, what is this? The next character is Henpecked Who. Okay. A bun master. Like, he a, a baker? Kind of. He is a former combatant in the Imperial Arena. He formerly used the drunken master style of fighting, but the constant consumption of alcohol left him destitute. Wait, I didn't think you needed to consume alcohol to be drunken master. Mm-hmm. You do? It, I think generally it's a stereotype that they do. I don't know if they always do. I Because I would think, I think the, it's a philosophy of motion, if I remember correctly. It's and not. Yet every single character from Henpecked Who to Bo Raicho chugs the alcohol down. Cause, well, I guess, I guess if you're looking for easy laughs, that's the best way to do it. So Eventually, he married his promoter's niece, who quickly became overbearing and forced him to stop fighting and settle down. He kind of does whatever he can to get away from her, but he is too afraid to leave her, hence henpecked. Mm. Next up is Wildflower. Whoa. A young girl who died during the flooding of a town called Tian's Landing. She is used by a heavenly gate guardian called Chai Ka as an anchor to the world so that he may help the spirit monk. We'll get there. And safeguard a piece of the dragon amulet. So she's we'll get there. she's a she's, she's a, dead. She's, she's a, a zombie. Kind of, yeah. She's dead. She's basically a vessel for this one spirit. Uh, the spirit does care for wildflower and protects her from harm. There is another spirit within her named Yazen, which is okay. an evil demon with goals of world domination. Okay, so this is sounding a lot like plots that I've heard in Dragon Age because people will know that there's a spirit of justice that comes up in Dragon Age Awakening that can also comes back mm-hmm. in Dragon Age 2 and actually um, in Dragon Age Origins there's a mage that you could that you meet called Wynne that if you befriend her she admits yes. that she's supposed to be dead but a spirit is, right. now has decided she needs to be alive so so this is a plot point that they've used it's a decent plot a point. A lot. I'm not saying I don't even know if the writers crossed over from Jade Empire to Dragon Age, but it's it's just a theme I'm noticing. Well, anyway, these two spirits within her are constantly fighting. It's kind of a yin and yang. They counterbalance each other. Okay. They actually manifest from like this girl's body in order to fight. Like they go into combat with you. It's weird. Whoa. Okay. Uh, finally, we have Sky. I'm not as mad about that one. That's also a name from hero there is some sky is a name from that as well for some reason sky doesn't bother me as much as wildflower and black whirlwind i just they all are perfectly in line i feel with the naming conventions of the genre though okay i maybe i just because i haven't been into the genre in so long that i just am not i'm not feeling it so sky is a thief Mm -hmm. who has a grudge against the lotus assassins and the empire for the death of his young daughter oh 
He does not like being shackled by society, so he constantly travels, all while looking for his revenge. It sounds like a martial arts version of of the Punisher, almost. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, let's. Yeah, maybe maybe not. That's probably not a good allegory. Kang the Mad is our next follower. Okay, Kang the Mad. You warned me about that. An avid inventor who specializes in making things quote fly and explode. He's okay. generally eccentric, not very socially skilled, and quite arrogant about his creations. Okay. He does not believe in making improvements, and he instead completely destroys older models before building new ones. Okay. He also has a very faulty memory, which is interesting. And he has a mysterious connection to Lord Lao's furnace, which was created by a celestial being. There's this whole celestial aspect to this, too, that I'm not going to really delve into. It is definitely tied to actual Chinese mythology. We're talking about the celestial being. The Jade Emperor is actually a character who is in the celestial bureaucracy right it gets it's it's a little too esoteric for our dealings here right but there's there's a whole separate mythology with gods and everything okay okay and our final follower is silk fox silk fox that that sounds dirty just gonna this say is it. actually not her real name. Most of these people, that's kind of like their real name or their preferred name. Yeah. Silk Fox is a mysterious black-clad assassin who reveals herself to be Princess Sun Lian, the Heavenly Lily. She is the princess of the current emperor. Oh, wow. She works undercover as a commoner in order to seek out evidence that Death's Hand is manipulating her father. She is a stereotypical rich girl by nature and comes across as snobbish and a bit naive, seeing her allies as commoners who are only worthy of traveling with her because she allows it. Okay. Nonetheless... She enjoys her other side as Silk Fox, as it gives her freedom to break away from tradition from time to time. Okay. And that's our gang. Our cast of characters. Let's move on to the actual story. And there's multiple chapters in this story. We're going to go through each one. Okay. So the chapter one starts in Two Rivers. Two Rivers. Is that the name of the town? Yes. Okay. It's a small little village. And the game begins with the player cast as a martial arts student under the tutelage of Master Lee, head of the Two Rivers Martial Arts School. Okay. The player's training is interrupted one day as the town of Two Rivers comes under attack from an aggressor in a strange ship who summons ghosts to attack the player. Ooh. I I had to do that sound. I had to. There's ghosts, there's spirits, there's demons, there's all sorts of stuff. You said ghosts, and because I'm just in a goofy mood right now, I imagine the booze from Mario, just like, <laughs> you know, little, sh- the shy booze, and like, and right. like hiding their faces. Gotcha. Yeah. The attacker is eventually defeated by Master Lee, who comes to the player's rescue and reveals that the attacker was a member of the Lotus Assassins, a mysterious force serving the Emperor of the Jade Empire. Okay. Master Lee sends the player to a cave beneath the school where they find a part of the dragon amulet and has a vision of the water dragon spirit, the entity whose death at the hands of the emperor ended the decade-long drought but left spirits roaming the land. Basically, this entity also takes people who die into the underworld. It's Okay. There's a lot that's going on here. I'm trying to brush. I'm brushing over some of it. Okay. There's a lot of conversations that are very long. <laughs> So it sounds like there's a lot of conversations that are essentially just flavor text explanations. No more so than most other games, I would say. We're brushing over a lot of battle and moving around and exploration and stuff like that. This dragon amulet is pretty powerful. It allows the player to accentuate their abilities by adding Mm -hmm. different gems to it and stuff. And it's a rug that's sought by, well, people seeking power. Okay. Master Lee explains that the player is the last of an order of spirit monks. Okay. And that he is a brother of the Emperor and was leader of the Empire's army. And during an attack on Dirge, where the player's temple existed, Master Lee came to oppose this attack Mm -hmm. and saved the player and the dragon's amulet from the attack on Dirge. Oh, wow. In the middle of this conversation, the door opens and somebody walks in and says, I can't find, you know, Dawnstar. And Dawnstar has been kidnapped by another student named Gao the Lesser, who was expelled for using forbidden magic. Oh, okay. There's always a forbidden magic, too. The player rescues her, along with the help of a man named Sagacious Zhu, who lives in the swamps near the village. Again, he's kind of keeping himself out of trouble just to avoid dealing with the Lotus Assassins. Right. They return, having killed Gao the Lesser, to find the village in flames, and Master Li has been kidnapped. No! Yeah. We find out that the Lotus Assassins and a figure named 
Death's Hand, is responsible for the destruction of Two Rivers. Sagacious Zoo at this point reveals himself to have been a Lotus assassin in the past, but is one no longer. Mm-hmm. The student, Dawnstar, and Sagacious Zoo head off in a borrowed flying machine. Actually, it's um, it's Gao the Lessers, I believe. Okay. Heading towards Tien's Landing in hopes of getting from there to the Imperial City where Master Li has been taken and where Death's Hand is going to be. Okay. As they take off, they are watched by a woman in black who's kind of like keeping an eye on them. Right, which I assume is our... Um... Chapter 2, Tien's Landing. Mm-hmm. The party crash lands their machine in Tien's Landing. And after crashing, the player has a vision of the water dragon spirit, who explains that there are pieces of this dragon amulet to find still, and gives some indication of where the three physical and single spirit pieces are left to find. Okay. Here they also meet Silk Fox for real. Um, mm-hmm. She just kind of watched them leave before. She thinks they were responsible for the destruction of two rivers, mistaking them for Lotus Assassins or Gather Greater's flunkies. Hmm. Eventually, that is definitely a sheltered woman's perception of right. that, I'm sure. Eventually, after deciding through battle that that can't be, she tells him that she's following Death's hand. She wait, te- wait a second. Okay, I'll, I'm going to let you finish, but we're using fighting as a lie detector test. Basically, she says you're too good to be a flunky of Gao the Greater. Okay, all right, all right. She tells the player that they will need a flyer and a wind map to get to the Imperial City. Hmm. So she leaves and our heroes set out to, she leaves saying like, I'll, you know, we'll see how well you do and I'll keep watching you. But she leaves and our heroes set out to find a new flyer and a wind map. She gives you a mission and she's not even going to bother to help now that she realized she was wrong? You're not important enough yet. Uh, okay. Gal the Greater, who is the father of Gal the Lesser, who kidnapped right. Dawnstar. Right. Gao the Greater is working with Inquisitor Lim, subordinate to Grand Inquisitor Gia. Gao the Greater is killed by the player who then recruits Sky and Kang the Med, who was Gao's personal engineer and created the marvelous Dragonfly, which is a flying machine. So okay. now we need a wind map. Okay. During their time in Tian's Landing, they find out that there was an amulet piece that was brought here by another spirit monk, fleeing the destruction of Dirge. Okay. He died with the amulet piece, and that area was flooded due to the construction of a dam. Oh. Now, though, the Lotus Assassins have opened the dam in order to search for the ruins of the amulet piece in the ruins of this flooded area. So they've done the water temple for you. (laughs) The player fights Chai Ka, a guardian bound in the body of a dead little girl named Wildflower, Mm. and learns that Chai Ka was sent to protect the player and that the Lotus Assassins already have the amulet that they are looking for. Oh, Okay. The student then heads to the Great Southern Forest. Here they have the option of helping the Forest Shadow defeat a demon known as the Mother, or helping the Mother's cannibalistic demons destroy the Forest Shadow. We deal with a lot of animal spirits in this area too. There is a fox spirit, there is... Elephant demons and rhino demons. There's, There's all sorts of stuff. cannibal demons. That's I'm mm-hmm. still stuck on. And the they look cannibal. weird. They're like weirdly like grotesque. Look, they look weird. This whole storyline though sounds a little bit like Dragon Age Origins with the forest spirit and the werewolves type thing. Oh, so, okay, yeah. Again, more. Par- There's so many parallels mm-hmm. going on right it's now. It's almost like the same company or something. <laughs> in either event, and this is the other, this is the one problem I have. Like, no matter what you choose, the story continues. Uh-huh. In either event, the player can convince the owner of the forest, Lord Yoon. That the forest is recovering and get Lord Yoon's wind map. Inquisitor Lim, who was Gao the Greater's boss, okay. will ambush the player at this point. Player kills him and recovers the piece of the amulet. So now da, they da, have da. they have a ship and they have a wind map and we head to the Imperial City. Okay, so we're now so the the Imperial City, which I'm assuming is the capital of the Jade Empire. Yes. Okay. The party lands in the Imperial City and is accosted by guards looking for the Scourge of the South. Matching the player's description. So now there's a reputation. Right. The description's not entirely accurate, though. Literally, one of the characters is like they didn't even get your, they didn't even get the details right. <laughs> of course not. That makes sense. If we're not, if we're not taking pictures on cell phones and sending them to our bosses, right? That's how it goes. Uh, these guards, their questions are interrupted by the princess, who stops their investigation, claiming the player is her acquaintance, and this is the princess we know. The player literally immediately looks at the princess and, like, flashes, like, oh, yeah, that's totally Sil- uh, Silk Fox. Does that even make sense in the context of how you're seeing her? Or? Yes, actually. They actually do a, they actually, like, do a fade from oh, one to the other. okay. Silk Fox is Princess Leon, the Heavenly Lily, daughter of the Emperor. We already just said that. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is 
Unconvinced that her father is behind the sickness and plague that plagues this land and believes that Death's Hand is responsible for all these machinations and all this other stuff. So Death's Hand is using her father's power to be able to do all this? She thinks Death's Hand is using is doing things behind her father's back. Okay. And it's like Jafar in Aladdin. Yeah. Okay. Spirits are walking the world through all of this. You know, we've seen numerous ones on the Meridi. They are unable to travel to the underworld, as we said, because the water dragon is dead. It's weird. Um, dead, but not really? <sighs> stuck? Is it more like stuck in some other planar existence? Kind of, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll get there. But uh, just know that whatever someone did to the water dragon has stopped the spirits from traveling to the underworld. Okay. So these spirits are just kind of wandering the world and causing problems. We also hear of golems for the first time here. Okay. Which are exactly what they sound like. Mm -hmm. And Silk Fox thinks that Death's Hand is trying to overtake the Empire and that her father is oblivious to all of this. Okay. That's the theory we're working with right now. Right. I have a feeling that's not the actual theory with the way you're saying it, but that's okay. Party decides to infiltrate the Lotus Assassin's training ground. Okay. There's two ways to do this. It's two different quests. They end in the same thing. You infiltrate. Right. And... Another Bioware staple, let's be honest. Yeah, they're not... They're good with choice and consequence, and yet bad with choice and consequence at the same time. Exactly. It's, it's like dialogue. They're great with dialogue, and then they have, want a sandwich? <laughs> Jeez. What was want a sandwich from? It was a response to Anders, if you romance him in Dragon Age 2, he goes, I love you. And then if you want to do the silly one, instead of saying I love you too or something, or admonishing him for it, your response is, want a sandwich? Dragon Age 2 was, had a lot of problems. Yes. <laughs> But they have some of the best dialogue options as well sometimes. It's just, then you remember want a sandwich. But like tap A to do awesome. Renegade and Paragon? No. Choices. Tap A to do awesome was their whole pitch for Dragon Age 2. Like, every time you hit the A button, you should be doing something awesome. That's why you kept doing, like, ridiculous, like, combos and stuff just by smashing the A button continually. That's why the combat was so weird in that game compared to the other two. Yeah, and I played that on the PC, so that was not fulfilling. Thanks, guys. Okay. <laughs> All right, moving I'm moving tapping on. A. I'm just strafing. Okay, so moving. So they infiltrate the Lotus Assassin's training, uh, training ground to get the last part of the Spirit Monk amulet. And here is the Geishas Zero feels that he was once of the Lotus Assassins who killed Master Lee's family. Ooh. During the quest, the party helps one of the masters here, Master Gang, assassinate his superior, Master Shin, making it look like an accident. Mm. It's a lot of weird power play thing going on. They put a corrupted shard into a jade golem, causing it to malfunction. The golems go out of control, damaging oh. the underground complex, and Master Gang is killed as the party battles these two jade golems and a handful of lotus assassins. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a cool scene. It um, sounds like an excuse to just have a bunch of golem fights, but that's just me. Yeah. Uh, here's where we start getting to the, the, the meat of the problems of this world. They also find Grand Inquisitor Gia, who reveals that the Emperor knew about what Death's Hand of the Lotus Assassins were doing, and in fact had ordered them to do it. Okay. What is, quote, it? They are... <laughs> this, was so, this is a hard scene to watch, actually. They're literally using slaves and prisoners, killing them. Oh, God. And it's like a horrific, like vats of acid type thing pouring onto these people. Oh my gosh. And then recovering spirit shards for use in this golem army to basically get rid of like having this army that you can just control. Okay. All right. So golems, that's another thing that Dragon Age then also borrowed. Right. Because they have golems, which Shale is amazing, by the way. Oh, ah. <laughs> And it's a pretty, like, I remember, that, I remember that scene was just, like, they just toss this guy onto this grate, and then these four things tip over onto him. Ah! So, and then they just pull, like, this glowing uh, thing from his skeleton and gooey corpse. His carcass. Yeah. His gooey carcass. Yeah. So, yeah, oh, that's okay. happening here, too. So, the player right. kills Inquisitor, Grand Inquisitor Gia, and, and then Death's Hand arrives. Death's Hand is, like, this is on the cover he's this imposing like full armored thing with the weird mask and everything and is just kind of a he's the sub boss okay you can't fight him he's he's too powerful yeah and sagacious zoo actually sacrifices himself to save the <gasps> player burying death's hand and himself in rubble from a collapsing column Oh my gosh, that's intense yeah it's actually a, it's a, it's an intense scene again this is all like stylized but you highly know. stylized yeah but still this is just this guy it went from like friendly from like friendly rescue adventure to oh my god right. 
this is super real now. Uh, it's about to get even weirder and, and real. Uh, so the party leaves and gets to the Imperial Palace. So you, you fly up to the Imperial Palace okay. and you land. And if you pick certain dialogue options, Wildflower kind of has this episode where her eyes start glowing and she starts speaking in different voices and stuff, which she's done before, but... Now now it's now it's a bit more intense, it sounds like. Well, now the spirits are actually fighting. This is called the spirit duel, and you need to pick one and kind of go into her mind and help fight oh the my one that you don't want. God. And this only happens if you talk to both of them. If you only talk to one the whole time, then it doesn't happen because the other one doesn't have enough, like, ability to... Like, doesn't get angry or whatever, but... If you talk to the bad one at all, then he's like, you must pick one of us. I'm sick of being blah, blah, you know, that type of thing. Okay. And <laughs> this reminds me of what's her name and her daughter Morinth in Mass Effect 2. Mm -hmm. What was the mom's name? Samara. Samara, it, who's P.S., face model just leaned into it 100%. She loved it. Samara and then her daughter Morinth, it was, yeah, it was very much there's a point where you have to choose between one or the other. If you're yeah. smart, in my opinion, you pick Samara, but that's just right. me. Keep in mind that this entire, it's weird and it's freaky. Her eyes are glowing and it's like, brr, 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 like it's weird voices and stuff. It feels like a poltergeist episode yeah. or something. And she just stands stock still while this is going on. It just looks weird. The camera angles are all weird. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it, you keep in mind that this is a body of a dead, like, little girl. Like, but how little are we talking, like 10? Let me pull up a picture. Yeah, that looks like a computer rendition of, of a, a jelly donut 10-year-old. Um, so yeah, uh, it just says little girl. I don't remember how old she is, but so she's 10 years old and she's taken over by two spirits. She might be younger than 10 even, but her, she's a, she's a little girl and it's, it's just freaky to watch. Her, uh, her eyes start glowing and she's like between red and blue and it's weird. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's, anyway, that's, that's that resolved. <laughs> she's dead. That resolved. It's still traumatizing. <laughs> That resolved, the party fights their way to the Emperor's throne room where Silk Fox learns of what her father has actually done. Like, he's just like, it was saving thousands were dying a day, so we did this We did this terrible thing, and we're doing these terrible things because it's mm. for the greater, you know, it's whatever. For the he's greater also, good, yeah. <laughs> for the greater good. Yeah, um, always. It just reminds me of uh, Hot Fuzz. But, um... <laughs> yeah. You're doing this all for the greater good. For the greater good. Shut up! <laughs> Master Lee is there with the Emperor, kind of under guard, and the Emperor is aware that the Water Dragon's death is stopping the dead from reaching the Underworld, but he's kind of power mad at this point, and the Emperor knocks everyone down in the throne room with a blast of magic and summons guards to kill them, but the player is defiant at this point, mm -hmm. and defeats them, like is actually able to fight. And then they battle the Emperor, who is able to kind of like alternate fighting styles, very strong fighter and stuff. Right. And the player kills the Emperor, okay. who collapses into dust. Wow. And Master Lee walks up to this this uh, this pile of dust, and there's like this jade, the jade heart. It's it's the Emperor's jade heart. It's like actually a crystal heart. Wow. And takes the jade heart, walks up to the player, and just kills them. Just like kills dun, dun, the like player? punches the player a few like in this weird in, the, in these weird spots, and then the player's just like. <laughs> what the heck? So the the player's dead. Wait. <laughs> Wait, from, you went there to rescue this guy. His, his full name is Sun Lee, the glorious strategist. And this is all like a long-term plan of his to be in power and all that oh, stuff. Oh my gosh. So, okay. Yeah. So the student wakes up in the underworld as a spirit. The water dragon reveals that Sun Lee had planned this all along, as we just said. He wished for the water dragon's power and needed to obtain the full amulet to defeat Emperor Sun Hai, which was the emperor you just killed. Right. The student meets up with the spirit of Abbot Song, who is a spirit monk who died at Dirge, which oh, wow. is, you know, where you were from, who tells the player what truly happened at Dirge. He s reveals that Sun Li was there and wore Death's Hand's armor and killed the abbot when he tried to stop him and his brothers. Wow. So the brothers arranged for Dirge's fountains to be tainted with human blood, weakening the water dragon. And Emperor Sun Hai killed Sun Kin, which is another um, one of the brothers, when he and Sun Li attempted to oppose him. And, eh, there's just a lot of back and forth with the family business here. Abbot Song re then reveals that one of his order attempted to escape with the student, but Sun Li, who had escaped from Sun Hai, killed the student's guardian and assumed his identity. Okay. So he's kind of just playing the long game at this point. Because mm -hmm. he knows that his brother is trying to kill both of them 
Right. He kills one. He managed to escape and kind of goes undercover as the savior of the player character. Oh, okay. So the player and Abbott Song make their way through the dirge and learn that an evil being has taken control after the fall of the temple. The student reaches the place where the water dragon was slain and defeats aspects of their own darker emotions. It's a, you know, That's a pretty common thing. I think Dragon Age Inquisition does that too, where you're fighting like your own doubt and everything if you do Cole's story. Oh, it, yeah, what you're fighting is essentially a manifestation of what would happen if you let the demon take right. over. Yeah. So after they fight these, these dark emotions, the student returns to life, and the rest of the party, who learns that the player is alive through Dawnstar, flies to Dirge to reunite with their friend, because that's where right. you ended up being alive. <sighs> Chapter 6, Defending the Temple at Dirge. Okay. While the student was dead... Sun Lee realized that action would have to be taken, Emperor Lee now, would have to be taken in case this, the, the player managed to return to the realm of the living. He retrieved Death's hand from the rubble of the Lotus Assassin headquarters and sends the Imperial Army and Death's hand against Dirge. Basically go there Wait, and... Wait, so was, was Death's hand dead and... No. He, okay. Death's hand was just kind of stuck under the rubble. Okay. Sky pretends to betray the group and lures Death's hand out so that the player can defeat him in single combat. Yeah. However, this is not enough to defeat him. Death's hand rises again, but the student uses the force of his or her will to expel Sun Lee's influence. This is kind of the ability they have as a spirit monk. Oh, so a spirit monk can expel influence. Yeah. So. The player that may then release Death's hand, use him as a slave, Ooh. or convince him to seek redemption. Ah, which, I, of course, I'm sure the most popular version is the last one. I watched people play evil versions of this, too. It was really weird to watch. Wow. Chapter 7, Back to the Palace. The party flies back to the palace to confront Master Li, now the Emperor. As they make their way through the palace, they discover that the em that Emperor Sun Hai had stopped the drought by cutting open the water dragon's corpse and letting the water that flows from it feed the whole empire. Well, that sounds sick and twisted. It's this... So... Literally, I have written here, it's this weirdly gruesome yet oddly visually beautiful scene. You're literally in this like underground area with lanterns and stuff, and there's this dragon all along the place, and there's just water cascading out of it. I guess the style of like those long snake like dragons. Yes. Oh my gosh. So, like I said, it's gruesome because you know what it is, but it like as an image itself, it's like that looks kind of cool and you know right exactly and it, it's just waterfalls cascading all over the place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's haunting knowing kind of that the water that has ended this drought for decades now is in fact the blood of the water dragon it's just like you've been drinking dragon's blood all this time literally the dragon spirit is talking to you and goes for 20 years my body has bled without it without end and it's just like <laughs> yeah that sounds like torture it is it, it is she literally the spirits like you cannot understand the pain and all this other stuff wow and your whole party is like this is monstrous and atrocious and you know this is so all the sons are just jerks just absolute awful people. well not uh not the princess right right she's not but yeah. the but that generation of sons <laughs> in particular so and here's, again, uh, one of these weird choices. The student has choices here with the water dragon's body. Uh, you can either destroy it, thus freeing the spirit, because it's kind of stuck. Yeah. And allowing the dead to find the underworld again and all this stuff. Yeah. Or you can defile the water to weaken the dragon and claim her power after defeating the emperor. What? So, yeah, I'm sitting there like, why would you pick that one? Why would, why would you, you want to do that one? <laughs> you can you can either... This sounds like you get to the end of Silence of the Lambs, and as the detective who discovers the girl that's <laughs> been kept alive, you can either arrest Buffalo Bill and save save this woman, or you can finish his work and now have your own skin suit. Eh? I, I, love eh? how, I love how you're saying that. But if I say bad <laughs> that's a problem. Because <laughs> America. Because America. And it's all I can say. Okay, so the player reaches Emperor Sun Li, who first sends constructs of bull and elephant demons. These are demons we've seen before. They're very powerful. And sends them after the player. 
Yeah. Suddenly then is encases the student in stone and attempts to defeat the player with the force of their own doubt. This is kind of like you're playing inside your mind again. Oh my gosh. And basically the battle, the battle is in their mind. It's like this weird, like watery plane of fog and everything. it's weird. Mm-hmm. However, if, if your, if your companions have survived, they will kind of, they're kind of stuck in stone too. Like they're all stuck in this, but they kind of don't fight it so that they can help you. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So they are able to join your mind and take out some enemies, leaving you with less enemies to fight during all of this. Nice. And you fight through waves of these enemies, two or, two or three waves, I think. And the emperor says, nothing in the mortal realm can help you escape. Then Sagacious Zoo appears in your mind. Whoa. Perfect and timing. And helps free the student from their trapped state in their mind, saying, I give you all that I am, all that I was, restore what what has been corrupted nice and basically just like does this awesome punch and then you're like all this all the stone around you i just have this image that he still just goes falco punch (laughs) even though that has nothing to do with this series uh emperor sun lee is surprised by the player's ability to endure like this is like the seventh or eighth time you've managed to dodge being dead and offers to help his student live in legend forever if the student dies without fighting and gives up no. Uh, that, I think that's the obvious answer. If the player does not accept that. Yeah. Sun Lee attacks and the player defeats him. They literally do this. Like, they're like no skills, no demons, no portals, no whatever. Skill versus skill. Mm-hmm. You win, you beat him. And his last words are, you surprise me yet again. I am a better teacher than I thought. <laughs> oh my gosh. What an ego trip. <laughs> Just like... We went through basically days worth of, of essentially mortal war. And this guy at the end of it can just say, well, actually, I was a pretty good teacher. <laughs> That's just the weirdest. Okay. So now that now the, the, main, the main bad guy is dead, if the student chose to free the water dragon, dragon spirit, mm-hmm. then the end sequence shows the people of the Jet Empire cheering for the player and their party. If the student chooses to enslave the water dragon, the end sequence shows the Lotus Assassins kneeling at the feet of the player character. Okay. And after that end sequence, there are short text summaries detailing the fate of all the characters who you have dealt with. Right. Okay. Uh, We're going to cover, not all of them, but we're going to cover the followers and Death's Hand. Yeah. So, and these all vary a lot. They vary depending on whether you chose to enslave or free the water dragon. And also if you romance the character. So there's a few options here. So Dawnstar either settles down with the student, Mm -hmm. with the player, settles down on her own, rules the empire with the player. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Or if the player talked her into a closed fist philosophy and or abandoned her, she wanders the Jade Empire alone. Wow. That's so, so sad. Yeah. Silk Fox. If the student does not romance Silk Fox, she'll become the Empress of the Jade Empire. Okay. That makes sense. If the student does romance Silk Fox and the student is male, mm-hmm. the player in Silk Fox will rule the Empire fairly or with an iron fist. Right. Okay. If the player is female, Silk Fox will either rule the f- Empire fairly with her, quote, companion, ah. or will, will again rule... With an iron fist, where both the player and Silk Fox don the Silk Fox costume to silence the centers. So, oh, so the two of you play the same role, so nobody yeah. knows which one of you it is. Okay. Or together. Ah, interesting. Sky. Sky will use the guild for good, for good purposes. The guild is a criminal organization that uh, is in the world. Okay. Or serve as the player's consort, or as a new death's hand. Whoa, Okay. If the student romances Sky, they leave the Imperial City and live in the outskirts of Tian's Landing. Unless the student is male, in which case they continue on their adventures through the Jade Empire, not complacent and settled down in one place. Mm. Black Whirlwind has probably one of the shortest entries. Black Whirlwind will roam the Empire, cutting off heads and eventually making his way around the world. So he's just going to stay violent for the rest of his life. He's kind of stupid, too. So So he's like kind of like an ogre. Uh, he also looks real weird. He has like these two, his, he has like a headband and then the only hair other than his giant beard is like these two little balls of hair on the top of his head. He's got these two little buns tied up. Yeah. And a beard. 
So he's rocking the man bun before it was cool. Two man buns. Two ma- double the man bun, double the rage. Okay, <laughs> I see how it is. Henpecked who, after a series of mishaps, who starts a delivery business, which he immediately uses as a method to escape his overbearing wife. I'm glad he found some sense of freedom, I guess. I don't know. That just sounds... It's, it's a little sexist, but uh, I don't know. Chai Ka, Chai Ka will either return to the heavens, freeing Wildflower and giving her the gift of life. Mm. Or he will remain trapped in Wildflower's body, causing her to wander the empire as a raving lunatic. Does she grow up or does she stay in little girl body? Because the idea of a thousand-year-old little girl body just wandering around like a <laughs> just, raving just, lunatic. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what we need. It says forever in the body of a child. Okay, super creepy then. Yeah. Super creepy. Death's hand will either become more evil. So Based evil. on your choices. Mutating so badly that his armor cannot hold its demonic form. So he just gets weird. Uh, or he'll spend the rest of his days wandering the empire as a crusader for good in order to make up for his past misdeeds. Aw. Yay. King the Mad. King will continue to invent machines until an explosion appears to take his life. Although strange machines continue to appear at the student's doorstep every year on the anniversary of their victory. A third alternate ending is available if the student agrees to the terms of surrender presented by Sun Lee in the final confrontation. The actual ending of the full game is uh, a statue of the student being praised years later by a class of children with a skin condition similar to that of the Los Assassins. They all have like this weird skin thing going on. Oh, wow. And one child asks what life was like before the protagonist's honored sacrifice and is quickly shushed by his teacher as a jade golem readies an axe to quell such questioning. So we're doing very oppressive stuff here. Oh, wow. The, secret, the sequence ends with suddenly laughing evilly as the decision to surrender has ultimately led to misery and corruption in the Jade Empire. And that's where we're going to end because that's the bad ending and we're going to end a bad ending for once. Ugh. That is a bad ending. I do want to play this game through fully. I haven't had a chance to yet. Last time I tried to play it, I had some computer problems with it. So maybe I can get it to work now. I kind of have to before we play on Thursday. Right. That's true. So, and we're going to see me fail at a fighting game again because I just... I, well, I, it's a little different. I'd say it's a bit more like Zelda than it is Mortal Kombat. Okay. I yeah. might be able to handle that. I might. It's be- a little wonky still, but it's not It's not like a 2v2 fighting game. It's But yeah. So that's that's Jade Empire. Woo! And we may we may cover this again. There's there there's, there's a con- lot you over you I did. you glanced over. I'm not, and I don't mean that in a critical way. I just mean that in a. It sounds like there's a lot of there's a lot tidbits. there's a lot of side quests we kind of gloss over and everything. Okay. There's there's whole side character like we glossed over the entirety of the arena there's an arena you can enter when you're trying to get into lotus assassins you have two options to get in one is to impress them at the at the arena by doing well Mm -hmm. so there's a whole side quest there there's other side quests there's finding shards for the dragon amulet there oh oh, these are shards that mean something unlike an inquisition (laughs) had to had to dig that knife in didn't you oh right in there right so i do want to cover it eventually i think also there's there's been continual rumors of Jade Empire 2 for years now. Okay. Who knows? Again, this was the pet project of people who are no longer with the company. Mm. They both left in the aftermath of Mass Effect 3. That was the beginning of the dark times. <laughs> uh, gosh. I mean, I mean, Dragon Age Inquisition turned out okay. Um, or great to some people, but... I liked it. Yeah. But, yeah. I liked Andromeda too, but... Oh yeah, let's There's... no no let's not start that debate because you if you say that too loud suddenly there's a nerd force that like comes over the horizon <laughs> in droves riding on horseback saying, "Where is the blasphemer?" So, but like I'm, you know, I'm in the Jade Empire wiki right now and there's like this is the character listing. So what he's showing me is essentially it looks like almost a gross of squares of pictures and now when I say a gross, I don't mean it's gross as in right. when I've referenced that word before. What I mean is it looks like it could be close to 144 yeah, pictures there's of a whole, characters so there's that are a, in this game. Yeah, there's a whole character. Sir Roderick Ponce von Fontelbottom, Magnificent Bastard, who is voiced by John Cleese that we didn't touch on at all. Like, he is... Uh, guys, he's got the most dapper mustache and monocle. I just... I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. What the heck is this guy doing in the Jade Empire? What is this? He actually just landed there. He just okay. washed up on the shores. Is, he, is it like he's he, like a magical being that just kind of like washed up or? No, he's a, he's an adventurer from an unnamed country. From an unnamed country. Yeah. 
there's you know there's stuff we didn't even touch on um so we will probably come back to this i mean there's a yeah. lot of games we say about that that we will be coming well, back to a lot of them we will be coming to. obviously we've come back to mist mm-hmm. we will eventually come back to elder scrolls oh uh, yeah maybe not as fine tooth of a comb i think there all the are time, but... plenty of of other podcasts who do a very good fine tooth of a comb right but you know we can cover all of Arena and then all of Daggerfall. And we can cover the games and we can cover like some of the sides and, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the machinations behind the Empire and all that. And right. We'll eventually cover Mass Effect and now we can cover the books for that. And there's just so much stuff we can cover yeah. for all these different things. Jade right. Empire, we can go back and go into the detail that we didn't go into now. There's just, and of course, there's also a lot of fan theories and stuff for almost all these games to explain things. Yes. And so... And now, since we've covered it, this is also something that we could do as a mini episode. Yes. So. Yeah, we don't want to do mini episodes for things that are new. We want to just like those to fill in gaps and things. So. Mini episodes for like, oh, I liked it when you talked about about such series. Let's let's do a little let's do a little taste. Let's get like a little lore snack, a little lore nibble <laughs> on something that we've already talked about. But I think we you've... put the mini episodes at lore lunch though. So. Yeah. All right, lore lunch. Well, because that's your dessert. It's your dessert for your main <laughs> course. So thanks so much for tuning in. But again, if you liked us, don't forget that there's so many different ways for you to follow up with us. Yeah, if you want to contact us, you can contact us through Twitter at Lore Together. If you want to contact me, I'm usually on the on Reddit under the username Lore Together Pod. You can email us directly at loretogether at gmail.com. And if you want to support us and maybe get some of those mini episodes that we're going to start doing. Those lore and lunches. Nom, nom, other nom. episodes early and check our streams every other week. You can do that at patreon.com slash lore together. Yeah, we do have a lot of fun with those too, actually. We do. So that's episode 14. Woo! And do yeah. We, do, we, do we have an idea of what we're doing next week? Do you have any hints? No, not yet. Okay, Mystic's just riding on the seat of his pants, guys. So we'll just keep up to us. I've stopped trying to keep track of all the different things that I have in some semblance. Uh, like some, I have a couple games that are just like one line so far. I haven't done full research beyond that. So, Well, if you do want to give us suggestions, remember you've got our email, you've got our Twitter, you've got our Reddit handle. You've got so many different ways you can co- keep in contact with us. So do that. Otherwise... Thanks so much for listening. We love we love seeing that you guys enjoy the work that we do and yep. our and our deep dives into lore. Well, if you do like it, also please don't forget to rate us wherever you can yes. and give us reviews because those will help us climb up those charts and get more people into all these video games that we're just still just touching on. Like we'll yeah. get into a lot of these as we go too. And it, it and my hope is that there are some classic games and some not so well known games that will get a little bit more mm-hmm. attention. Because people oh, put I'd a love lot to, of good I'd love work to do um, the Zork series sometime. Ooh. The Ultima series, kind of these old school adventure games that are a little we weird. Will, um, yeah. It'll King's be... Quest. King's Quest is good because that's also, I think, written by uh, one of the predominant female writers in the industry yes, at the time. Yes. I think I remember her specifically loving a cheeky puzzle game, which yeah. is not my kind of game, but whatever, to each their own. So there's plenty of things for us to still do. But thank you guys for listening. Thank you so much. We appreciate you so much. And we will catch you next time. Ah, Bye-bye.